This is the 20th Sunday in the season of Pentecost. The gospel lesson for today comes again from Luke, his 18th chapter, verses 9 through 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in him. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, and even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to he heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Prayer is like going home. Luke presents these very different two characters through their acts of prayer. The first is the Pharisees, who is steeped in the law. The second, a tax collector. When we find ourselves in a quiet moment reflecting on our own lives, our relationships with others and ourselves, when we are brutally honest, we may be like the tax collector in today's parable who approached God in the sincerity of humble prayer. He realized he was spending his time in selfish living. In prayer, he went home to his creator. In simple, honest prayer, he revealed his truth. He had separated himself from God and his neighbors. His prayerful confession brought him home to God, and he came home to himself and to what he needed. It's in such a quiet time of prayerful truth-telling, we also realize we're not alone with our faults and flaws. We are not alone facing our selfish ambitions. In prayer, we can face the truth of our separation from God and experience the Creator's grace, and no, we are not alone. In fact, our prayers bring us home to our Creator. In prayer's inner silence, we become as attuned to the Creator's presence within us as a small bird is through its life, sensitive to the world around it. In today's psalm, this image of peace is presented within the temple of God. Even the sparrow finds a home, writes the psalmist, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord. The psalmist paints for us a picture of peace and safety, tranquility with our Creator. It's such a peace that delicate birds find a secure place of comfort to nest and to lay their eggs. In short, a home. Birds and other animals have an inner sensitivity to the rhythms of the earth around them. This keeps them from harm. You might say they're at home with themselves because their bodies are instinctively attuned to their environments. Humans too are instinctively drawn to our Creator. When Jesus asked his twelve closest disciples if they would leave him as many other disciples had done, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter's comment is one example that humans are instinctively drawn to the Creator. If we carefully observe animals, we can learn a lot about what's coming in our lives, which can be helpful to us. For example, air pressure affects birds' behavior, usually before humans. When the barometric pressure drops, 
swallows fly as close to the ground as possible where air density is greatest. You may have noticed that they perch lower when they feel the air pressure drop. When air pressure rises, birds also sense this. Then they will fly higher, indicating fair weather. Now for sailors and fishermen, farmers and pilots, weather information from birds and other animals greatly predates current weather forecasting with global sensors that we have, satellites, computer modeling that are used today. Many ground animals like horses and dogs today are still our earliest warning systems to the minute ground tremors that precede earthquakes. Humans also know our safety depends on understanding which way the wind is blowing. It, experienced campers can look at the behavior of their campfire smoke to know of upcoming weather. If the smoke goes straight upward, the air pressure is high with dry weather ahead. If it descends, it means the pressure is low and they may get, might get out the rain gear. Many in California today are in the path of devastating fires. You know they're paying close attention to shifting winds. Their survival may depend on their careful attention. Do you think it may be important for Christians to know which way the wind is blowing before deciding to start, continue, or conclude a mission or ministry? Through prayer, we can figuratively learn which way the wind is blowing. It helps attune us to all our senses, including our spirituality to consider what's happening from all directions before taking, making a decision. As we approach the 2020 election time, I was impressed by an article on a study that was designed, developed, and conducted by, by two political scientists. They gathered together 526 registered voters from all over the United States in one location in Texas for a weekend. This group was carefully se selected from each state to represent the total of all American voters. They represented the political spectrum from right to left, the conservative to the liberal. All races were represented, genders, economic groups. Some had never been on a plane before. Only with name tags on, they engaged one another with topics which are polarizing the country today. And the outcomes? The result was that the 526 registered voters learned a great deal about each other by listening to themselves, by ending. They ended by respecting the viewpoints of those who differed from them. Most importantly, they learned how reasonable people can hold quite different opinions because they have lived different lives. Meaning, they came to their ways of thinking due to varied experiences. There was an open-mindedness and acceptance of each other. The greatest result to me was that differences of experience were validated as good. When all was done and they had it home on their airplanes, their prayers may have shifted away from the Pharisees type of prayer, exalting themselves as superior to the others, to prayers of thanksgiving to live where they can openly express themselves and hear from others who differ as being a good thing. Determining which way the wind is blowing may best be determined by getting to know those who are in our community, especially those we think are so different from us. Elijah Cummings was a devout Christian congressman who died last week, hailed as a person who listened to those with different backgrounds and perspectives. He respected them and found ways to work with them. 
Imagine we had a gathering in the fellowship hall for a morning discussion. The only objective would be to talk freely with each other about any and every subject of interest or concern. Concern. And at the end, we would join in singing the hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West, written in 1908 by William Arthur Dunkerley under the pen name John Oxenham. He wrote, In Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great family bound by love throughout the whole wide earth. In him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord, close binding humankind. Join hands, disciples in the faith, whate'er your race may be, who serve each other in Christ's love are surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north, all Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. In today's parable, our Lord presented two people praying in importantly different ways. The Pharisee offering a prayer of gratitude and thanksgiving to God. He grateful that he was not like others. His prayer separated himself from others. In the other, on the other hand, the tax collector's prayer spoke to his pain and sorrow for his misbehavior, which resulted in his separation from others. This implied his desire to join the human family. Perhaps we may be inclined to pass judgment on these people of prayer. Jesus did, saying the tax collector went home justified. However, we don't have a clue from this parable if the tax collector actually changed his behavior in any way. His justification was found when he honestly bared his soul, told the truth, and received the mercy of God. May we do the same to the glory of God. Amen.